Hi there. Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at Logic Monitor ServiceNow CMDB synchronization application. My name is Forrest Evans. I'm a product manager here at Logic Monitor. And today we're going to walk through setting up the application and highlight some of the application's out-of-the-box functionality. But let's start with a quick primer on ServiceNow and their CMDB. ServiceNow describes themselves as a single platform for automating business processes. And their Configuration Management Database, or CMDB, is a series of hierarchical tables, or classes, that contain records on each asset and service within the enterprise. So the, our application will automate the sharing of data between Logic Monitor and those CMDB classes. In fact, as part of the application, we've even introduced a new CI class for the Logic Monitor collector. This Logic Monitor Collector class will carry records of all the collectors configured in your Logic Monitor portal. So what does our application do? Well, the first feature we're going to show is synchronizing devices in and out of ServiceNow. So take a quick look at our two environments. We do have our environment, our ServiceNow environment here with a few pre-filled in Linux servers. We don't have any collectors yet or devices. In our Logic Monitor portal here, I've set up this CMD imports. We'll be, we'll be creating new devices, but I also have quite a few other devices and collectors already running. So let's configure our application. We'll come back to the Logic Monitor CMDB menu, the Application Configuration section, and the Setup. I've pre-filled the API token information, and we'll just give it our portal name. The rest of these settings down here are all covered extensively in our documentation. Now that we have our authentication set up, and we've told it which portal to go and gather information from, let's import some collectors. All of the data imports are covered by the scheduled jobs. And we can use the LM collector import script to import them. Now these scheduled jobs do not come out of the box scheduled, so we're gonna just trigger them manually for now. With the running of that script, we should see some collectors starting to populate in our CMDB. And here's all six collectors that I have in my environment. Now that we have some collectors in our environment, let's provision a device from our CMDB to Logic Monitor. We don't have any Logic Monitor devices yet, but we do have these Linux devices that we mentioned before. So we'll walk through all the steps in a manual way of creating a device in Logic Monitor. The first thing we need to do is establish a relationship with the collector that we want to monitor this device. So we'll use our relationship manager and the application upon installation adds a monitored by relationship type. That relationship type pre-selects a list of collectors and we'll go ahead and use this local Windows collector. So now that we've told uh, ServiceNow that when you create this device, we want to monitor it with this particular collector, we also want to trigger the creation into Logic Monitor. That's driven by a field called Logic Monitor Enable. So we'll change that value to true. And our device will then get created into Logic Monitor. Note that these steps can all be automated on the back end following your own business processes. When we come back to our resources panel in Logic Monitor, we can see that the device has been created and it has a few data sources assigned already, but Logic Monitor will start its active discovery process and is gonna go learn a lot more about that device. Now that was a lot of steps to create a device. We offer a form out of the box to simplify that process a little more. We'll use this, this form. 
we'll select a collector at the top here and then we can bulk add as many devices as we want. In this form, when I click Submit, we'll do the same steps that I did before. It will associate the relationship of the collector to these devices and change the value to true. So we'll come back and check our logic monitor portal. And we can see now the bulk device one and two have also been created. Let's see how we're doing with our Linux server. Looks like its active discovery has run, found out a lot more about our, our particular server, including a lot of good demographic information about the uh, versions and operating system and RAM and, and a lot of other technical information about that particular device. If we take a look at the device here in service now, we still don't have that information. But we can use the button up here, the Logic Monitor Device Sync, to import all that data that we've had we have mapped. By clicking that button, it will issue a single import for that one device. It will run it through the import set and transform maps that are delivered out of the box. And now we have a lot more information about our CI, including how much RAM, the CPU speed, uh, the, the particular OS version, etc. But what about all those other devices that we had in our logic monitor portal? We have quite a few other devices here that have all been pre-staged with the uh, class name and, and already have a lot of good information on it. So let's import all of those as well. We'll come back to our scheduled jobs. We'll use our standard device import script. Again, this script could be scheduled to run on a regular schedule that makes sense for your business. We're just gonna execute it manually. And we can see devices starting to filter into our CMDB. In particular, we have this Windows server with a lot of good rich information about what's, what that server is. Now you might have noticed that our original Linux server had an asset tag. That asset tag did not yet come down as an attribute to our device, but we've made that very easy to add additional uh, CI information as properties on a device. If we come to our application configuration section, go to outbound device attributes, we can add a new row to this table. We'll give it the logic monitor field name or property name. We'll give it the field name that we want to gather the information from off of the CI and we'll save that. And now, if we trigger another update on our Ubuntu server device, by editing the description here, not only will it update the asset tag, but it'll refresh any other information that we've deemed ServiceNow would be authoritative for. We'll check on our server here, and now we have our asset tag coming down. All the updates that are done in Logic Monitor are handled by these business rules, and this is a list of business rules that comes out of the box. There's some example code out here, uh, as well as the, the three business rules that are responsible for device provisioning, updates, and removals. Let's look at these example, how these example group provisions work. Out of the box, we've uh, provided the faux use case of, we wanna create a new company and that company will be marked as a customer. When, once that company is created, we'll create a new group object, device group object in Logic Monitor. We'll call this the Acme group and we'll check the box for customer. and give it a description. If we come back to our Logic Monitor portal, and again, check in our resources panel, underneath the CMDB imports, we will see that our Acme group has now been created. Some of the attributes that are stored on this are, are also the society, the class name, etc.
So that, that group functionality could be customized to instead create based on department creation. Uh, you can add additional subgroups after the initial group is created, etc. The use cases are always unique with every new company that implements this software. This integration also ties in closely with our other ServiceNow application that's responsible for incident management. Now that we have synchronized our CMTB, we can, tr we can trigger an alert on one of our devices and see that CMDB information associated with the alert so that we can do better troubleshooting. I'm going to use my Windows server here as an example and play a little trick on Logic Monitor to generate an alert. So Logic Monitor will go out and attempt to pull this device. It'll now see that this threshold uh, is outside of bounds uh, and will generate an alert. That alert will be created as an incident in ServiceNow. Looks like we got a few new alerts that have come into the portal here. And if we take a look, uh, it looks like our bulk devices are also reporting some alerts. So if we take a look at this incident, it comes with a lot of rich information that was all delivered by Logic Monitor's alert delivery system and through our alerting integration. We can also see that the configuration item that's associated with this has been associated with the ticket. So if we look at our dependency views, we can also see that this particular device is monitored by this collector. If we go to view form for that particular collector, we can also see that this collector CI has all of these particular devices being monitored by it, as well as these two devices currently have open incidents. Let's go back and check if our Windows one has alerted yet. There's our Windows server alert. And it looks like it just created the ServiceNow incident for us. This is our Windows server for our ping alert. And we can see that the Windows server is associated there. We could also directly open that CI to understand more about the device. So thank you for watching. If there are any questions, please reach out to your account executive or client, customer success manager and they can help with additional questions.